In this video, we're going to come up with some guidelines for our multiple tests that we've come up with to determine if a series is convergent or divergent. So it's not always clear which test you may do, need to use. And so this video just gives you some guidelines. Uh, just keep in mind that you may need to try more than one test or you may need to use multiple tests uh, to be able to uh, determine uh, if the series is convergent or divergent. When using the tests, you may need to do some algebra, use some facts from trigonometry. You may need to use L'Hopital's rule when you're taking the limit. You may need to evaluate improper integrals. So don't give up, but just be prepared to try multiple things. Some reminders when you're answering these types of questions is more is better in terms of work. You want to show as much work as possible. You want to explain to me using standard English and standard mathematical notation in full sentences, what it is that you're trying to do. What is your reasoning? Give me as much detail as possible. And then certainly when you write your conclusion, you must explicitly state which test you are using. And you need to have shown work which supports that you could come to that conclusion using that test. So the first thing you might want to check for is to see if you can use the p-test. When I look at this series, it may not be obvious, but if I make a change of variables, if I say u equals n plus 2, and realize that arctan of 5 is just a constant, I can write this as the sum u equals 3 to infinity of 1 over u squared, and now we can apply the p-test to say that this is convergent. You also might want to look for a geometric series. So certainly if you just have a, a power of some constant, then that is a geometric series. And now the only thing is, is what is the common ratio? And is that ratio less than one or greater than one. So our common ratio here would be arctan of 0 0.9. Well, arctan is an increasing function. And since 0 0.9 is less than one, I can say that arctan of 0 0.9 is less than arctan of one, which is pi over four, and pi over four is less than one. So no calculator is needed. I know right away that I have a common ratio, which is less than one. So I have a convergent geometric series. Now, if the terms look similar to a P-series, we could try one of the comparison tests, either the direct comparison test or the limit comparison test. So let's take a look at this. I have arctan of n over n squared plus one. We call it arctan uh, is bounded above by pi over 2. And pi over 2 over n squared plus 1 is smaller than pi over 2 over just plain old n squared. So I can say that the series whose terms is pi over 2 over n squared is convergent by using the pi, te pi test, the p test. And then the original series is convergent by the comparison test. If you're not really sure what the limit of the terms is, uh, you do want to go ahead and use the test for divergence to make sure that the terms approach zero. If they do approach zero, you still have more work to do. But if they do not approach zero, then you know from the test for divergence 
that the series is divergent. So let's take a look at this example here. Um, let's take the limit then as n goes to infinity of the terms of this sequence. So I have multiple powers. I have e to the power of n, 4 to the power of n, and 2 to the power of n. The biggest base is 4, so I'll multiply top and bottom by 1 over 4 to the power of n. And now I see that all of these uh, terms, e over 4 is less than 1, so that will go to 0. 2 over 4 is less than 1, so that will go to 0. 5 over 4 to the n will go to 0, but the I'm left with the n part here, and that is going to go to infinity. So this series is divergent by the test for divergence. If you have an alternating series, and sometimes the alternating series are disguised, you don't always see the minus 1 raised to the power of n, you could try the alternating series test. So for example, here I don't have a minus 1 raised to the power of n or raised to the power of n minus 1, but I do have this sign of pi over 2 plus pi n. And remember that uh, sine over 2, sine of pi over 2 plus pi n will be negative 1 if n is odd. So if n equals 1, I'll get uh, 3 pi over 2. If n equals 3, I will get um, Three n that's the same. Three pi n is six pi over two, so I get seven pi over two. Uh, somehow I'm, I'm not getting this to come out right. But anyway, it is true that uh, if n is odd, uh, sine of pi over two plus pi n is. Um, is going to be negative 1. And if n is even, I will get um, positive 1. So we do have an alternating series. And if I look at the part that's not alternating, the n times, or 1 over n times natural log of n, uh, obviously n times natural log of n is an increasing function. And so the reciprocal is going to be decreasing. I need that for the alternating series test. And I also can see that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, natural log of n, is 0. Those are my two conditions for the alternating series test. So by the alternating series test, this series is indeed convergent. Uh, if your terms of the series contain factorials or products, you want to try the ratio test. Um, you do have to evaluate a limit after that. So let's consider this series. If I take the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, I don't need the absolute value signs here because I have positive terms. I'll work that out using some algebra. So my n factorial divides out. The e to the power of n divides out. I'm left with n plus 1 over e. And that goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So this series is going to be divergent. Uh, you would have found the same result if you'd used the test for divergence but you would have to do more work to calculate the limit. So if you have something of the form where you have a sum series, I'm sorry, sum sequence raised to the power of n, you want to try the root test. So if I look at the series where the terms are 2 to the power of n minus 1 over n, 3 to the power of n, I want to do some algebra first. I'll rewrite 2 to the power of n minus 1 as 2 to the power of n over 2. Now when I use the root test, I still have this term in the denominator, which is 
root n of 2n. So let's calculate that limit uh, as n goes to infinity. So I'll change to x. Uh, so I'll take the limit as x goes to infinity of the x root of 2 to the power of x. So the x root is the same as raising it to the power of 1 over x. So I'll take uh, logs of both sides. And then I'm going to take the limit as x goes to infinity. I'll need to use L'Hopital's rule. And I'll see that that limit equals 0. But that's the limit of the natural log of y. I need the limit uh, as x approaches infinity of y. Well, y, remember, that's the same as e raised to the power of the natural log of y. So I can go ahead and put the limit up in the exponent. And I just found that the limit as x goes to infinity of natural log of y is 0. So I'll get e to the power of 0, which is 1. And so what does that tell me? That tell me that I can't use this? No, because the full limit then, that's only part of my limit. The full limit has 2 over the nth root of 2n times 3. So as n goes to infinity, the nth root of 2n goes to 1, but the whole ratio goes to 2 thirds, which is less than 1 which means that the series is convergent by the root test. Another thing to consider is that if your terms in the series are the values of a function evaluated at the positive integers, and you have a function which is positive, continuous, and decreasing, and has an easy to compute antiderivative, you could try the integral test. So, for example, we may want to find the values of p where the series whose terms are 1 over n times the natural log of n raised to the power of p. For what values of p is that going to be convergent? Well, I'm going to look at the improper integral from 2 to infinity. Just notice I have to start at 2 because I, the natural log of 1 would be 0. So I'll go ahead and uh, replace the infinity with a parameter alpha. I'll make a u substitution. And then when I get to the integral in terms of u, I can pretty much answer the question because now I could just use the p-test for integrals. I know that uh, the integral from you know, a to infinity of 1 over u to the power of p uh, is convergent if p is greater than 1. But let's just make sure. Let's go through all the steps here. The antiderivative is going to depend on two cases. If p is not equal to 1, we can use the power rule. If p equals 1, we get the natural log of the absolute value of u. But u is natural log of x, and x is greater than 2. So we don't need the absolute value signs. We could just say that would be the natural log of the natural log of x, or this expression for the natural log when I've used the power rule. So let's take the case where p equals 1 first. Um, we just get a, a the difference of two natural logs. One is the natural log of the natural log of alpha, subtracting some constant here. But as alpha goes to infinity, I put as n goes to infinity, I should say as alpha goes to infinity here. Uh, so as alpha goes to infinity, uh, natural log of alpha increases without bound, and so then the natural log of the natural log of alpha also increases without bound. All right, well, what about uh, if uh, p is not equal to 1? We have to use the power rule. And so we get the same uh, 
type of situation that we had before, if uh, p minus one is bigger than zero, meaning if p is greater than one, then this first term will go to uh, zero. And so I actually, I put zero here, but that's not correct. It would actually be a very large expression here. It would be this expression right here. I don't know if I can squeeze that in there. Put it over here for now. Yeah. There we go. All right, so if p minus one is greater than zero, the first term goes to zeros, alpha goes to infinity. The second term is a constant. And so we would get that constant as my limit value. But if p is uh, less than one, then this term is going to go to infinity. So the series is convergent by the integ integral test when p is greater than one. All right, let's do a few more examples for practice. We have the series uh, n equals one to infinity of n sine one over n. We'd like to know, is that convergent or divergent? So it's not entirely clear to me uh, if this is a convergent or, uh, I'm sorry, if these terms go to zero. So let's run that check. Um, at this point, I could think of n sine of 1 over n as being sine of 1 over x over 1 over x. I could use L'Hopital's rule, but I just made a little change of variable. I know that as x goes to, oh, I'm sorry, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x goes to 0. So I said, let me look at the limit as y goes to 0 of sine of y over y, because we learned in Calc 1 that that value is one. And so by the test for divergence, this series is divergent. I would like to check this series here. The terms are e to the power of one over n. So that's the nth root of e over n squared. Is that convergent or divergent? Well, if we think about the nth root of e, as n gets larger, the nth root of e gets smaller. So the fourth root of e is smaller than the cube root of e, which is smaller than the square root of e, which is smaller than e itself. And so I could just make the comparison that, okay, since e to the one over n power is less than or equal to e for all n starting from one, then e to the one over n over n squared is less than e over n squared. So the series whose terms are e over n squared, that's convergent by the p-test. So by the comparison test, the original series is convergent as well. In our final example, uh, I have the ratio of two uh, powers, well, powers plus a constant. So I have 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 5. And there may be more than way, one way to go about this. Um, we might be tempted to try to use the, the root test, and that may be possible. Um, no matter what we do, we're going to have to do some algebra. So I'm going to say, well, let's try the limit comparison tense. I mean, um, when n is large, the constants that are being added in the numerator and the denominator don't make a big difference. And so it's about 2 to the n over 3 to the power of n. Unfortunately, I can't use the direct comparison test, but I could try the limit comparison test and compare this with 2 to the n over 3 to the n. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity and put my original 
terms on top and two to the n over three to the n on the bottom. Um, I think the simplest way to look at that algebraically is I'm taking the top term and multiplying it by two, I mean one over two to the power of n, and the bottom uh, original denominator, I'm multiplying that times one over three to the power of n. And that gets me an expression which whose limit is one. Now one is a fine limit when I'm using the limit comparison test. A limit of one only gives us a problem if we're trying to use the root test or the ratio test. On the other hand, if we're using the limit comparison test, I couldn't accept a limit of zero, but zero would be fine in the root test or the ratio test. So what does that tell me? Well, since the series whose terms are two to the n over three to the n, really that's two thirds to the power of n, that's a convergent geometric series, then by the limit comparison test, the original series is also convergent. So working with these series, it does take a lot of practice. I think we've got enough examples between what I've done in the videos and what you can find in the textbook and on other resources. And the more you practice, the better you get.